the Blue Beetle origin. In a squalid tenement, near a rumbling elevated of a large eastern city lived the Garrett family. It is December 6, 1916. Inside the house, Michael Garrett, patrolman, nervously paces the floor. Sit down, Michael. Everything will be all right. Um, if they'd only hurry in. Suddenly a door opens and a short, stocky doctor strides in. Here you are, Mike. As fine a lad as I ever saw. A boy, sure, and he'll be the finest man you'll ever be seeing. Quickly the years fly by and the baby named Dan grows into a sturdy boy then one day. Flu epidemic spreads. grew lonely, Danny, and came for your mother to take her to heaven. Now, be a brave little boy and don't cry. Uh, uh, I won't cry, Dad. As the years pass, the absence of Danny's mother leaves a lasting impact. It fosters a sense of self-dependence and self-reliance in him that surpasses that of most boys his age. Hey, you. Leave Billy alone. He's smaller than you. With determination in his eyes, Danny steps forward, ready to face the challenge and protect his friend. Oh, yeah. Who says so? I said so. Give it to him, Danny. Now beat it. The next time, think twice before you bully someone. Pick on someone your own size. Arch, Butch Feller had it coming to him, Danny. It's closing time, you can go now. Can I go home with you, Danny? See, Danny, it's not for you all the little kids around here will get beat up. If Butch or the others pick on you, just tell me. So long, Billy. Hi, Dad. Have a hard day. Hello, Danny. Yep, it was a hard day. So, soup's on. Dad, you know, someday I want to be a policeman, like you. It's a fine profession, Danny, but I was hoping you'd go to college first. I'd like to, Dad. But college is expensive, isn't it? Well, Danny, I've been saving a little and soon I'll have enough to send you. With determination and a goal in mind, Danny studies hard and saves the money. He earns, finally, the day of graduation arrives. As has been our yearly custom, we now offer a scholarship to State University to our most outstanding student, Daniel Garrett. And so, armed with the scholarship and an ardent desire to succeed, Dan Garrett goes to State University. Goodbye. Dad, I'll write soon. Hey, look, a freshman. Let's see who he is. Maybe he'll be a good fraternity prospect. Hi, freshman. Welcome to State. Hello. My name is Dan Garrett. Not the banker's son. Oh, no. I'm afraid not. I'm here on a scholarship. Uh, oh. Scholarship, uh, oh. Excuse me, but we have to see some fellows. Scholarship fooies. Bewildered but undaunted, Dan goes to a boarding house and gets a room there he meets Nick Collins, who explains why the others acted so strangely. And as you're a scholarship man, they don T think you'll be fraternity material. Oh, I see. 
The next few days are busy ones, and Dan soon forgets his hurt. Finally, one day, come that call to all aspiring athletes. First call for football players. When I played for Lincoln High, I was on the prep school varsity. Where to play? Garrett. I never played organized football. Hear that? And he expects a college make a college team. What a laugh. <laughs> but when the season opens, the coach calls out the lineup, and at wing back is Dan Garrett. Don't lose your heads. They're tough, but you can lick them now. Go to it. Both teams fight desperately, and near the end of the fourth quarter, the score State 0, Cornell Prep 0. It's State's ball on Prep's 30-yard line. On the next play, Dan receives the ball and scores on a beautiful reverse, winning the game. Garrett wins the game, and at the end of an undefeated season. This is the varsity coach, Dan. I like your playing, Garrett. Try the varsity next year. After a summer of hard work, then returns to school a sophomore. Going out for boxing, Dan soon became champion. As a hockey star, Dan achieves success and popularity. And soon his company was sought by all. Happy hours roll into days, hour, weeks. And years one day in his senior year, do you say knock on his door? Coming. Telegram, Dan. for me. Good lord. Dan, what is it? It's about my father. I must go to him at once. Your father was wounded in the line of duty. Stop, stop. come immediately, immediately, man again. A few hours later, Dan rushes to his father's bedside. Dad, Danny boy, thank heaven you've come in time. <laughs> I'm going to join your mother. Promise me you'll finish school. Goodbye, son. Dad. Dad. No! He was a brave man, Danny. I... I know, Mike. Those dirty rats, I'll get them if it takes all my life. The summer after graduation, Dan joins the police force. And with Mike Manigan, he is assigned to a patrol car. Your father and I were on the fourth together for 25 years, Danny. If only I can get my hands on the skunks that shot him in the back. Who were they, Mike? I don't know, Dan, but right after the murder, a girl reporter. Karen Dobbs left a letter with the chief, only to be opened in case of her disappearance. Or death. So? I have a feeling the names of your father's killer are in it. I know she was near the scene of the shooting. Is there no way we can get to the letter? Nix, even the mayor can't get to the vault was where it is kept. Meanwhile, at a home of Chick Alonzo, a notorious gangster and gambler. The dame's here like you ordered, boss. Well, Chick, what do you want? Ah, Karen Dobbs, the news ace reporter. I've had enough of this fooling around. Karen, either you stop blackmailing me or else. You wouldn't dare. You kill me and the letter I left with the DA sends you and the boys to the electric chair for the murder of Mike Garrett. Mm -mm. Not this time, Karen. By the time that letter is opened, I'll be over the border. It was just luck that you got pictures of the shooting, 
Now, you'll suffer for every penny you squeezed out of me. I've got a few sweet tortures in mind. Later that night, a dark figure in a strange blue costume takes the lock to the safety deposit box in police headquarters. Silently, he withdraws a letter and reads it. Chick Alonzo, so he murdered my father. Replacing the letter, the figure wearing a blue beetle insignia dashes off to avenge his father's death. While the blue beetle rushes to Alonzo's house, the gangster prepares to torture the frightened girl, Karen Dobbs. You wouldn't dare. Oh, no, tie her up, boys. Let go of me. She won't be so beautiful when I get through carving her. Let's start with a plastic surgery. Hey! Take your hands off that girl. What the heck is that? Take him out, boys. up with the boys. I'll make my gate away. Punch! <laughs> Quickly untying the girl, the blue beetle snaps out a command. Hurry! Phone the police. I'm going after Chick Alonzo. Right. I've got photographs that will send them to the chair. Good. I bring Alonzo in a jiffy. Meanwhile, in his powerful touring sport car, Alonzo speeds for the border. He'll never get me! Suddenly, a small beetle alights on the windshield. The blue beetle? Mug to headquarters. An hour later, a police headquarters. This is the Alonso gang, call Ma Chief. The girl says she can prove they killed Mike Garrett. Chick Alonso, unfortunately, got away. Suddenly, the lights go out. Hey, what the hell? Put on them lights. I think I got the switch. Sergeant, look. It's the gang boss, Chick Alonzo. There's a note attached to him. Listen, Listen to, to this. This is my first blow against crime. I shall not rest until Gandam is wiped out. Signed by the Blue Beetle. Several weeks later. 
Morning newspaper. Morning Girl indicted newspaper. accomplice. Girl. Blue beetle aids in capture of Alonzo Gang. Well, Dan, that clears up the mystery of your father's death. I'd like to catch this blue beetle and see what he's like. Maybe you will, Mike. I know I will. I'll get him if it's the last thing I do. Technically, he's a lawbreaker. No doubt, Mike. To be continued.